Thank you.
Mama is a queen and Papa is a king, so I am a princess, I know it. But court etiquette is a dumb, dreary thing. I just hate it all and I show it to sing on the stage. That's the
Mijatovic, and I would like to call to order the commencement of the School of Management of the State University of New York at Binghamton. Everyone, please rise as you're able. We welcome you to join vocalist Ria Bolander in singing the national anthem. As Dean of the School of Management, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the School of Management Commencement Ceremony. This is a special ceremony as we bring together our baccalaureate candidates as well as their families and friends. Congratulations to all of you. An off-script Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the audience. As we begin this ceremony, I would like to welcome a member of our Binghamton University Council who is joining us today, Maureen Wilson. I would like to introduce our other special guests who sit with us on the stage this afternoon. They will stand as I call their names. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. President Harvey Stenger. Donald Hall, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. Jill Dixon, Interim Dean, University Libraries. Courtney Ignari, Chair, Professional Staff Senate. Scott Fuhrer, Alumni Association President. Karen Jones, Vice President for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Laura Kaplan, Student Speaker. Michal Katz, keynote speaker, Michael McGough, three-time Binghamton University alumnus, retired chief financial officer. Natalia Miotovic, Grand Marshal, Professor Art and Design, Chair of the Faculty Senate. Pamela Mishin, Platform Party Marshal, Associate Professor, Public Administration, Faculty Advisor to the President. Brian Rose, Vice President for Student Affairs. Oktai Shikostri, Senior Director, Global Partnerships. Please join me in applauding these special guests. Let me also recognize all of the esteemed faculty members who have mentored and guided our graduates. Your efforts have been crucial to the intellectual growth and achievements we celebrate today. Will all faculty on the stage and in the audience please rise as you are able? Please join me as we applaud their support of and dedication to the success of our students. I would also like to thank the Binghamton University Wind Symphony, our vocalist Angela Acedevo, and the Edward P. Maloney Memorial Pipe Band for their participation in today's ceremony. Again, 
Welcome to the celebration of the School of Management Class of 2023. Many SOM students talk about a career in product. Four years ago, I wasn't even sure what a career in product meant. But thanks to some amazing SOM alumni and students, I've been introduced to the challenging and dynamic field of product management, where experienced managers act as the liaison between engineering, key strategic business functions, senior leadership, and even customers to manage an organization's digital product. The digital product itself is created purposefully and guided by principles of UX UI, or user experience, UX, user interface, UI. This is also useful to the further development of your leadership. Take, for example, the UX UI principle of user-centric user -centric design research, which requires both a quantitative and qualitative perspective, strong understanding of scientific validity and reliability, understanding information architecture and flow, and insight to synthesize several ideas across different disciplines. Good news, graduates. Your analytics and management courses taught you how to evaluate information and resources, helped you incorporate different disciplines and philosophies into producing comprehensive solutions for complex business problems. Your leadership challenge is to continue to commit to lifelong learning guided by validity and reliability and develop followers who do the same. Another UX UI principle with a link to leadership, visual prototyping and wireframing. This involves prioritization of content, functionalities, availability, and consideration of intended behaviors and decisions. Prototyping begins as low fidelity and becomes evolutionary. Good news, graduates. Those 29 business case competitions you participated in, they weren't just the most fun you had at Binghamton. They were the start of learning how to assess problems and turn them into task priorities and eventual solutions. Together, you structured innovative, ordered, and practical proposals. Your leadership challenge is foundational to successful leadership. You have to effectively initiate structure to provide clarity and then engage in collaborative evolutionary decision processes to promote excellence among your followers. And finally, the UX UI principle involving user interface development. Atomic design is not a linear process, but rather a mental model to help us think of user interface as a cohesive whole and a collection of parts. More good news. In your capstone management 411 simulation, while some teams bankrupted their companies by week three, and you know who you are out there. Other teams went on to compete for top standing among 5,000 university teams worldwide. But there were lessons learned for everyone. Teamwork matters. Your leadership challenge is to build a productive mental model for your team. Invest in your people, even if that means spending a little more time to bring everyone up to speed in the beginning. And then set high expectations for team performance. If you believe in your people individually, the parts, and believe in the potential of your team, the holes, your people will believe in your leadership. As you become successful leaders in your own right, I hope you remember one important fact. Alumni engagement builds SOM's UX UI. If you're willing to invest a little time in our classrooms, or mentor a student, or hire an intern or a graduate, then we elevate an already terrific management school even higher. SOM class of 2023, you did the hard work and you're ready to graduate from one of the top 10 public business schools in the country. You are becoming employees and future leaders of some of the world's most recognized companies. Thank you for allowing us to partner with you on your educational and career journey. Good luck, goodbye, but just for now, and congratulations. It's now my pleasure to introduce President Stenger. SOM 2023! This is an exciting day for both our, undergrad, our graduates and for the university as we celebrate the achievements of the Binghamton University School of Management 
class of 2023. Great job. We are proud of the collective and individual achievements of the students whose work we recognize today. So let me begin by extending to our graduates a heartfelt congratulations for a job well done. I also want to recognize the faculty members who have mentored and guided our graduates. Your efforts have been crucial to the intellectual growth and achievements we celebrate today. Thank you, faculty. And a special welcome as well to the parents, family, and friends who are here today to share in the joy of watching a loved one reach a rare milestone. And we can't say it enough, Happy Mother's Day, moms. Your support and involvement has been crucial to our graduates' success, ensuring that the occasional challenges of writer's block, projects that didn't pan out, and lower than expected test scores were never too difficult to overcome. The degree our graduates are receiving today is a sign that tells the world that they have achieved the level of expertise that will allow them to advance or commence in their chosen discipline and have the prerequisite knowledge to add to the quality of life we lead as global citizens. Graduates, please think back to the start of your journey, to your first days at the university. Entering college fresh out of high school, you began by choosing a field of study. Perhaps accounting or business administration seemed like a good career or you saw it as a stepping stone to an MBA. Of course, there are probably a few of you who made the daring choice of undeclared before settling on your vocation. And then you chose to double or triple major because you already had the credits and the grades needed to get you into Binghamton's most competitive school, the School of Management. But each of you spent the next few semesters Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Do you remember March 11th, 2020? The governor had just announced that all SUNY campuses will teach remotely. Most of you were first year students at Binghamton. The campus emptied over the next four days. Our lives were about to change forever. We didn't know what the future held for us. We lived the next 18 months with fear, sadness, and uncertainty. We isolated, quarantined, socially distanced, masked up, studied from our bedrooms, got sick, knew friends and loved ones who died, and we questioned our future as a species. My sadness led me to record weekly videos to keep in touch with you. But you and Binghamton University faced it with courage and determination. By the first week of April, we refunded 18,000 students over $25 million. We were the first SUNY school and the fifth in the country to give refunds because it was consistent with our values that our student success is our top priority. It almost cost me my job. We tested, made restrictive social rules, delivered thousands of meals per week to students living in isolation and quarantine in Digman and Hillside and hotels along the parkway. And yes, we made mistakes, but we quickly tried to correct them. But somehow, some way, we ended up here. You ended up here. Nice job, class of 2023, you made it. It's my pleasure to introduce our provost, Donald Hall. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great pleasure to be among those celebrating with you today my first commencement series here as provost at Binghamton University. And let me take this opportunity to congratulate all of our graduates and their families and their friends who have supported them throughout their time here on the many achievements that we're celebrating today. 
You are truly remarkable students who have brought your intellectual curiosity, your work ethic, and yes, your sense of humor to bear throughout your time here. As you graduate from Binghamton, you will take with you what you've learned in your classes, case competitions, student organizations, and through the thousands of personal interactions you've had with those around you. You will take all that you've experienced here, and I know you will become change makers in the world. Yes, we are living in a different world since the pandemic upended our lives, but your Binghamton education and experiences will serve you well, whether you expect to continue on to graduate school or head straight into this new world's workforce. According to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, employers plan to hire nearly 15% more 2023 graduates than they did from the prior year's graduating class. That is great news for you. And LinkedIn has seen a 12% increase in job posting, 21, I should say, percent job po uh, increase in job posting, advertising skills and responsibilities rather than qualifications. That is also great news for you because you're leaving us with a foundation not only in your major area of study, but also based in the liberal arts. And this strong foundation has helped you hone your critical thinking, decision-making, and communication skills, and that will serve you well whatever career path you follow. As you've prepared to take your time here to tackle what is ahead, the next decisions you might fi find yourself facing are what will my work life look like? Do I want to work remotely, in a hybrid format, or always in an office? How will I maintain my work-life balance? Since you're well past that undecided phase of your college years, my advice to you is pursue the career path that excites you the most. Make your decisions from among the best opportunities presented to you, but as you make your way forward, remember always to define your value to your prospective employers. Show them that you know how to solve problems, that you know how to work together in teams, that you learn to be a leader here at Binghamton University, and that you're a great communicator. And those are all skills that you learned from the foundation you've received here, and I can't say enough about how they will serve you well in the future. These are skills that will serve you well whatever endeavors you take. So thank you for choosing Binghamton. It has been a pleasure to have you here as our students. Congratulations on your many accomplishments. And please, please stay in touch with us and keep us informed about everything that I know you're going to accomplish in the future. Thank you. I would like now to introduce our Alumni Association President, Scott Foyer. Scott would like to share his congratulations on behalf of the Alumni Association. Congratulations, Class of 23. Thank you, Provost Hall. Good afternoon. To you, the class of 2023, I offer congratulations on graduation from Binghamton University. I'm so excited for all of you, and it's an honor to be part of this very significant and emotional day. By now, you've probably heard a million times about the importance of networking and the value of relationships. After today, you can say that you've heard it a million and one times. I do feel the message is worth reinforcing because one of the best attributes of Binghamton University is the strength of our alumni network. And now you are part of this network. We have more than 150,000 alumni in over 100 countries. Wherever you go from here, you'll find Binghamton alumni there. By graduating, you've automatically joined the Alumni Association. The insert card in your diploma cover talks about what this membership means. Also included is your own personal print of the B photo, the class picture you took together during your first week on campus. We hope you will look upon this photo fondly and display it proudly so your friends, family, and colleagues can see that you are a graduate of Binghamton University. The Alumni Association is a resource for you, always here to connect you with other alumni and the university. But like anything else, you get out what you put in. If a Binghamton event is happening close to where you live, try to get there. If your location or schedule only allows you to connect with us virtually, try to log on. We have LinkedIn groups, an online mentoring program called Mentor Match, which I encourage you all to join. And every year at homecoming, we have a great tailgate party and other activities where you can get together with your college friends. Whether it's in person or virtually, always keep adding to your network. 
You never know when a connection is going to benefit you, and perhaps you'll be able to help someone else. I've heard many stories of Binghamton connections leading to jobs for recent graduates, and just last year I was able to help a member of the class of 2022 get her first job after we met at a virtual networking event. I've hosted alumni events at my law office and I've mentored and advised students and fellow alumni. I'm very willing to help and I found that other Binghamton alumni feel the same way. I encourage you to take advantage of opportunities to engage with alumni who want to be a resource for you. And down the road, when you're able, be sure to give back and pay it forward to the next generation. Always remember what it feels like to be at the beginning of your career journey so you will understand and relate to the graduating classes who follow in your footsteps. My family recently celebrated Passover with a close college friend of ours and her family. Her dad, a 96-year-old Holocaust survivor, still leads the Seder and tells incredible stories about his experiences during World War II and his path to America. Every year he speaks about the concept of Lador Vador, which is Hebrew for from generation to generation. Holidays are one way that we make connections between generations of people. And it occurred to me that this concept applies equally to the Alumni Association. By giving our time to the next generation of alumni, we make a connection with them and make a difference in their lives. This is a little sad for me because it's my last commencement as president of the Alumni Association. It's been a great experience and has given me the opportunity to meet some incredible people. But you don't have to be on the Alumni Association board to realize the benefits of getting involved. Before I close, I want to emphasize to you that it's your Alumni Association and where it goes from here largely depends on you. So get involved and make your voice heard. Be sure to scan the QR code that you will find around campus and update your contact information in the Be Connected database so you'll receive notifications about upcoming events and programs and not miss anything that might be of interest to you. Though your time as a student may have concluded, you are a Bearcat for life. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Scott. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker, Michal Katz. Michal Katz is head of the Investment and Corporate Banking Division of Mizuho Americas. With a career spanning over 20 years on Wall Street, Michal is recognized as a seasoned and trusted advisor to corporations and boards in corporate finance, strategy, and digital transformation. Michal is responsible for Mizuho America's banking activity throughout the US, Canada, and Latin America, including industry and financial sponsor coverage, investment grade and non-investment grade loans, equity and debt capital markets, and by the way, all of you should know what we're talking about, project finance, securitization, and M&A. Michal's strategic vision for Mizuho emphasizes the importance of building trusted relationships, intensifying client coverage, leading with content, and showing up as a team with multi-product and bespoke solutions. In October of 2022, American Banker published their list of the most powerful women in banking to watch. Michal Katz was number two on the list. <laughs> Under her leadership, Mizuho Americas recently financed the purchase of software company Citrix Systems for $16.5 billion. Additionally, Mizuho recently financed a private equity consortium's acquisition of the television rating group's Nielsen for $16 billion, one of the largest leverage buyouts ever in the media industry. Despite Michal's immense success, she's number one on our list for her dedication to helping SOM students find a place in the competitive world of banking and providing insight and advice that helps our faculty and dean's office develop challenging and relevant curricula and developmental programs. Michal received her BA in political science with honors from Binghamton University in 1987 and her JD from New York University School of Law in 1991. She's incredibly supportive of SOM and we appreciate her taking the time to share her insights with you today. Michal, if you will please join me at the podium. I am delighted to present Michal Katz with this plaque honoring her distinguished service to the profession, community, and school of management at Binghamton University. Please welcome our honored alumni speaker, Michal Katz.
Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, President Sanger, Dean Dion, the faculty, and SUNY Binghamton community, thank you for having me. I am honored to be here today to the friends, family members, and loved ones here to celebrate the accomplishments of the School of Management students. I'm so glad you could be here today for this momentous occasion. And to the graduates, congratulations. You have made it. You can take pride in your achievements. While I was preparing for today, I came across an article by the writer Bruce Feiler. He analyzed 100 graduation speeches and boiled them down to four core messages. When he, what he captured from them are the fundamentals of being a good and productive person. Dream big, work hard, make mistakes, and be kind. There are similar ingredients for success in your professional lives. Become an expert in your field, be present and prepared, be a good team member. These traits will set you on a path to doing well in your career. All of you here today are intelligent, resilient, well-rounded, and possess all of these attributes. But the more I thought about it, I realized that in our current world, these are table stakes. If you follow this playbook, it'll help you be a good person and good at your job. But will these lessons make you great at being you? Will they help you become the greatest version of yourself? Will they prepare you to become a change agent and a leader in an increasingly complex and dynamic world? I'm not so sure. With that in mind, I try to look back at my own journey and those people I admire and who are truly great at the art of being true to themselves and to their trade. What experiences, lessons, and moments have positioned them to achieve excellence and be impactful? Across the board, an attribute that stand out is the ability to view discomfort as an opportunity for growth. Take the story of Alex Honnold, the professional rock climber and first person to free solo El Capitan in Yosemite. The rigor, discipline, and expertise that he displayed as he sought to accomplish something no one had ever done before was truly amazing to behold. But the thing that really inspired me, the characteristic that stuck with me, with his ability to go beyond what was familiar to him and his willingness to embrace and take risks. He had a quote related to this concept that resonates with me. He said, my comfort zone is like a little bubble around me and I've pushed it in different directions and made it bigger and bigger until these objectives that seem totally crazy eventually fall within the realm of the possible. In that spirit, the first lesson I offer to you today is this will to take risks and push limits because it is an exercise in growth. Each of us will encounter things in our lives that cause us discomfort and perhaps trepidation. But if we reframe them in our minds, and yes, prepare and practice, they can be a source of strength. Acclimating to the uncomfortable situations will build your resiliency. Going beyond our comfort zone also allows us to forge a more authentic, better version of ourselves. Put simply, we can do what is expected of us, or we can blaze our own trail. Familial and cultural expectations are something many of you likely understand. Growing up in my family, there were five acceptable professions. Lawyer, doctor, teacher, nurse, or accountant. So I went to law school, I married a doctor, my mom is a nurse, and my sister became an educator. All we're missing is that accountant. <laughs> But I soon realized being a lawyer was not what made my mind churn with ideas or made my imagination run wild. Rather, it was working with leaders and innovators in building businesses, solving problems, and cultivating teams. Entrepreneurship was certainly not within the expected category of careers I grew up with, nor was the field of investment banking. And yet, it is where I ultimately found my passion and blazed my own trail. So remember this, there will always be societal or cultural expectations of what is possible, what is appropriate, or what is best for us. Today I'm here to tell you to be defiant in the face of these expectations and to push boundaries to satisfy your curiosity and explore new interests rather than use the map others charted for you. I'm also here to tell you that when you encounter turbulence in your life, rely on your training, experience, and instincts. As we sit here on this beautiful day in May, it can be easy to forget what is happening beyond the boundaries of this quad. Our world is in a state of upheaval. Artificial intelligence is advancing at an unimaginable pace. 
the global geopolitical order that has underpinned the world since 1945 is being undermined in a serious and concerted way. The financial sector is experiencing dislocation not seen since 2008. Moments of uncertainty like these can be unsettling. Shake your confidence or question your abilities. Resist this urge. I've weathered the bursting of the internet bubble, the recession that followed the tragedy of the 9-11 attacks, the 2008 global financial crisis, frontline I would say as I worked for Lehman Brothers, and the recent black swan event of a once in a century pandemic. As a financial professional, I know that no crystal ball can foretell these situations, but when they occur, I fall back on my expertise, I recall prior experiences, I trust my gut and rely on my team. In moments of unexpected upheaval, I have found opportunities big and small to take an active role in charting my future. The COVID shutdown came four months into my new role as the head of the banking division of one of the largest banks in the world. It required me to develop new management skills to lead a team working remotely from 550 locations while supporting clients in a liquidity crisis until the capital markets reopened. The shutdown also presented an opportunity to pick up a new hobby, boating, and spend quality time with my family. At the end of the day, if you embrace your own agency in trying moments, volatility can expand your horizons and open your mind to the unexpected, unforeseen, and unimagined. Discomfort also teaches you how to sail into the headwinds. We all know why sailboats move forward when they have the breeze at their back. And yet, their most important capability is being able to make progress when the wind is not in their favor. With small exceptions, the financial industry and the broader economy have seen an extraordinary streak of good fortune since the years since 2009. Indeed, this period has been one of positive trends. Unemployment has hovered near historic lows and wages have been raising at a steady clip for over a decade. But now, with uncertainty on the horizon, fortune will favor those who are able to adapt. When looking at my CV, it may appear as though I've taken a straight line from this campus to where I am today. In reality, there has been a lot of tacking to ensure I was able to maintain momentum. Having my kids early in my career, girl-boy twins nonetheless, often felt like a juggling act on a tightrope. But that experience helped me recognize the importance of prioritization and that I was capable of adjusting and making progress when confronted with challenges. It made me learn to move forward even when the going was tough. And speaking of my kids, they remind me every day to recognize that everyone has something to contribute, especially when it offers a different perspective. And I want you to remember that this journey that you're about to embark on should be about being your best self and pushing the boundaries of what is possible in your life because that is the true definition of fulfillment. Now we'll end with something a little more cliche. As you move through life and achieve things big and small, remember to stop and celebrate your accomplishments and triumphs. After immigrants, I went straight to work before attending law school at NYU. I did not take the time to appreciate the accomplishment or mark the milestone of my degree. Everyone here did, and I'm thrilled for you. You nailed it. So today, I share with you the honor of donning the cap and gown Congratulations, class of 2023. I wish you all the success in the world. I'm honored to mark this milestone with you together. Thank you, Michal, for your remarks. At this time, we will recognize the accomplishments of our baccalaureate degree candidates. <laughs> Before we recognize the accomplishments of our candidates, we will first recognize students who have achieved Latin honors. Latin honors are based on a student's cumulative grade point average. We recognize three levels of achievement, cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude. The names of the candidates for these honors appear in the commencement program. We will not announce each by name, but we shall recognize students attending today by having them stand in place. Candidates graduating cum laude, please rise.
You, you may be seated. Candidates graduating magna cum laude, please rise. You may be seated. Candidates graduating summa cum laude, please rise. You may be seated. My congratulations to all of you on achieving outstanding academic success. Will all baccalaureate candidates please rise? <laughs> President Stenger, as the Dean of the School of Management, I am pleased to present to you these candidates who have fulfilled all their baccalaureate degree requirements as prescribed by the faculty. Will the first row of graduates please remain standing, all others be seated. Student Marshal William Hoffing and School Marshal Joey Sai, please lead the first group of candidates to the platform so that all may receive recognition for their academic achievement. Billy Francis Hopping, Leo Francis Cormier, Nicholas David Costello, Christopher Michael Fisher, Amanda Joanne Harrop. Sophia Chavez Catano, Jonathan Thomas Velatanga, Evan Lucas Bendini, Zachary Stephen Blevins, Noah John Clark, Daniel Adwar, Julianne Margaret Sedeno, Alex Rivera, Jason Patrick Holt. Jason Eric Natal, Jack Shea Kutaya, Max A. Yuseda, Alyssa Sir L, Jason F. Bacala, Jing Ting Yu, Christine Ko, Lou Garcia, Lydia Young, Kelly Shu, Annie Shu, Ashley Song, Winston Dong, Michael Anthony Steinberg, Benjamin T. Hughes, Jack G. Casabon, Wyatt Leiter Rexting, Jonathan Aaron Barretts. Kyla Willa Mintz, Evan Leo Kratka, yeah. Gabriel Paul Plotzker, Maya Klibanoff, Rosalie Son, Isaac Gabriel Frankel, Seth L. Silverman, Nicole Nama K, Adam Block. Yehuda Silverman, Gabrielle Schoenberg, Maya Homa, Eliana Miriam Garfinkel, Mia S. Levinson Raskin, Lara Golda Kaplan, Sage McCormick Kelly, Susanna Lee, Franco Luis Santos, Isabella Luz Gonzalez, 
Brian M. Wong, Kitty Liao, Philly Sao, Shi Yu Mei, Jessica Mei, Tae Yun Kim, Han Byo Lee, Madeline C. Rutnick, Martina Paula B. Soriano, Benjamin Mark Fabeny, Travis J. McGuire, John Patrick O'Hara, Olivia L. Loretta, Ethan Zachary Koval, Stephen Robert Cervelli, Miranda Noah Wexler, Tyler Abati, John T. Duff, Jacob Skolnick, Kayla J. Perry, Fiona I. Fruman, Michelle Samantha Goldfarb, Hope Eden Feinberg, Natalie Ann Daly, Sydney Nicole Kaminsky, Jenna Ashley Hirschman, Stephen Francis Marino, Cameron I. Entwistle, Alexander Sobel, Hunter Edward Sieber, Michael Anthony Alessio, Ionis Kapoulos, Kalapoulos, Sungju Choi, Yuan Kwang, James Richard Lee, Christina Tan, Audrey Liu, Kwan Sub Yun, Caitlin T. Chang, Rana Lin, Helen Lin, Song Hua Su, Kelly Ka Yen Mak, Janet Liu, Olivia Chin, Henry Louis Bretz IV, Matthew H. Lewin, Michael Salvatore Tedesco, Noah Rivel, Brandon Harris Berger, Brandon Brown, Andrew Logan Hochheiser, Hudson R. Satin, Jacqueline R. Meyerbeck, Shira Gulo, Kristen A. Edelman, Caitlin Elizabeth Douglas, Heidi Rachel Reinhartz, Olivia Hawkins, Christina Margaret Rogolo, Michael Robert Moore, Jr., Edward Leda, Anna M. Brichter, Emily Hannah Stern, Gabriella R. Lazzarano, Zachary Francis Donellan, Joseph Gossabian, Nicole Francis Tomlinson, Cristiano Antonio Mele, David Romero, Ryan Lee, Ryan M. Tomko, Quinlan Thomas Ingram, Mallory Ann Fowler, Paul John Rizanich, Sophia N. Maron, Raymond Dominguez Vargas, Matthew Allen Lotto, Michael Robert Lopez, Vincent Chen, Alexander John Gilson, Samuel P. Erard, Tyler Legg, Amanda Jean Kerwick, Sophia Brutkaya, Kenneth Bernstein, Dominic J. Bonanno, Aaron Mindel, Samantha Ray Dapont, 
Sean Felix M Michael Galligan, Sean Robert Coveney, Matthew Palestino, Jordan Prince, Griffin Allen Bell, Ian Henry Simolo, Amy C. Puthamana, Benjamin Horowitz, Melissa Kosovic, Tyler Atlas, Emily Worth, Julia Francis Parparo, Brody David Cairns, Anna Michelle Decker, Stefan Thiel Bassini, Michael Emponisa, Mark Bernard Riley, Jeremy Dillon Cases, Julian E. Alessi, Samuel Rabizade Resnick, Alexis Asherian, Amit T. Perez, Luke Christian Milner, Michelle Naomi Chubaroff, Anthony Michael Chaffick, Tyler Anthony Green, Gongbin Wong, Jeremy Ian Tuckman, Ronit Chabra, Abel Maharian, Andrew J. Ho Kim, Joshua Jung Jun Kim, Preston Carter Scagnelli, Matthew Eugene Oliver, Sarah Grace McKay, Patrick James Wisniewski, Matthew James Zipser, Randy Liao, Jarrett Lenny Piccioni, Serena Justine Frey, Alyssa Cara DeLeo, Marcos Turukis, Tyler Mayotti, Michael K. Bush, Grace Vittoria, Eric M. Davidoff, Jorge Luis Torres Solari, Nora Sarah Monasheri, Bryn A. McLean, Megan Alyssa Wilson, Jonathan Lynn, Bridget Marie Flynn, Tiffany Yi, Kayla Isabel Marharani, Madison Elizabeth Jaziriao, Matthew Bui de Souza, Cassidy M. Evans, Spencer Scott Adelucht, Daniel Alexander Todd, Matthew A. Contarino, John P. Dixon, Connor Muldoon Fort, Aaron C. Kong, Matthew J. Nicole, James Ryan Diaz, Brendan P. Shanahan, Eric Matthew Kessar, Shang Shi, Xun Xiao, Xuan Hong, Jia Mu Ren, Mo Ju, Danielle E. Lee, Ariella Jaime Yaragian, Aragachi, Carly E. Vavoliza, Cameron Sierra Crawford, Alex J. Mudavoy, Alexis, sorry Alexis, Jackson Eric Yeager, William Charles O'Shea, Christina Marie Cubisco, Alexa Obeso Bisnar, Nicole June Ehrlich, Kevin Eng, Antoinette Rose Stefanikos, 
Allison Page Hill, Jack B. Koch, Zachary Lichtenstein, Sean Coles, Jr. At this time, I would like to introduce Laura Kaplan, our 2023 student speaker. <laughs> Laura even has signs, that's excellent. Laura has been an outstanding student at Binghamton University with a strong work ethic, leading her to making the Dean's List every semester of her undergraduate degree. With her strong leadership skills, academic excellence, and deep commitment to the values of Binghamton, she has made a significant impact at our school. Coming from Australia, Laura has embraced all aspects of college life. She's been a key member of the university's Division I tennis team while showing her broader commitment to Binghamton Athletics by serving on the Student Athlete Advisory Committee for two years. She was also the social chair in Alpha Kappa Psi, the professional business fraternity, responsible for executing various events and activities to promote camaraderie and foster a sense of community. Laura will be working this summer as an audit intern at KPMG before returning back to Binghamton to complete her MBA. Please welcome to the podium, Laura Kaplan. Distinguished guests, family, and friends, and most importantly to us, the graduating students. Congratulations to each of us. We are here, down with gowns and caps, to celebrate our amazing experience. Receiving our degrees at this phenomenal school after years of hard work, discipline, and determination. We experienced this unique and very fun stage of our lives during the dislocation and uncertainty of the global pandemic. Not many will be able to point to having experienced what we have. We should cherish the memories, the good and the bad, the exciting and the scary. And most importantly, we should all be very proud. So I guess you might be thinking, why did this young, young Aussie girl choose to speak today? And what could she possibly have to share that might be relevant or useful in our future lives, and which we might remember in 10 years' time, or for that matter, 10 minutes from now? And in truth, I have nothing more or less to contribute than each of us as we reflect on our lives to date and the experiences that have shaped who we are today and aspire to be in the future. But for me, the experience I want to share encompasses three words, learning, curiosity, and pride. January 10th, 2020, one week before the spring semester of college and after an exhausting 30-hour journey from Sydney, Australia, the Uber dropped me off outside my dorm at Binghamton University and my college experience had begun. After dropping my bags, reality set in. I do not know a single person out of these 18,000 students who attended this university, and I also knew nothing about college life. I meandered to the dining hall with an overwhelming sense of vulnerability. The situation I faced was unavoidable, and I knew to succeed, I had to sit down and begin conversations with people I had never met before. So now we all know the classic movie scene. I have my plate of food, I walk up to a table of four girls and introduce myself and ask if I can sit with them. They, of course, have the obligatory look at me and then one another, and maybe somewhat reluctantly, they say yes. Four hours later, I leave the table with four new friends. And now almost four years later, I still have those four lifelong friends. Like all of us, I've experienced and learned so much of the past three and a half years. I have watched our school empty out completely in two days as the COVID pandemic erupted in 2020. I've watched, I've watched my tennis teammates compete each week as individuals, but more importantly, as a unified team. I've watched my housemates witness their kitchen erupting in fire and thankfully putting it out. And I've watched my professors learn new skills to help guide us through a new and ever-changing way of learning. We've all had a similar experience some exhilarating, some entirely frightening. But cumulatively, it is these experiences that have shaped us into the unique adults that we are today. And as I stand with you today and reflect on that first day and the three years that have followed, and I ask myself, 
how can we use those experiences to shape our future and ensure we continue to grow and flourish? Firstly, let's continue to learn. As we complete our college degrees and go out into the real world, we will specialize, become experts in our field of choice, and we will inevitably become narrower in some important aspects. But we need to remember these years and continue to learn, grow, and expand our interests. We have a degree from one of the best universities in the world. We have benefited from insights and opinions other than our own. Let's remain curious and remain open to the ideas of others and continue to learn. And let's strive to always remain confident and optimistic, believe in ourselves and being confident in our own capabilities that we have the knowledge and the skills to succeed. Let's put ourselves in uncomfortable situations, like the one I'm in right now, knowing that each experience builds our confidence and prepares for the next challenge. We should seek challenges, take calculated risks, get involved, dream, aspire, and do. Let's remember my first day at Binghamton story and the power of the word hello. It's easy to forget the impact that a simple greeting can have, but it's an opportunity to connect with others, expand our network, and it's also a simple gesture of kindness. In our increasingly digital world, where much of our communication happens through screens, saying hello is such a strong acknowledgement of an individual and can lead to unexpected opportunities. It's amazing how a small word can open doors and create, create possibilities. And as, and, and as we embark on the next phase of our lives, let's take the spirit of saying hello with us. And then finally, being a Bing graduate has taught me the importance of being a good alumni. In Australia, we don't have the bond of being an alumni. We don't have students walking around town showing off the college that they're so proud of. You look very strange wearing a University of Sydney sweatshirt. Though then again, it doesn't really get cold enough to wear a sweatshirt anyways. Here in the USA, however, we wear, her, we wear our sweatshirts, or jumper, how I personally like to call it, with pride. It's a badge of belonging to a school that has given us life skills, fun, excitement, and a great education. We belong somewhere, and knowing that for years to come, we can say with pride we went to Bing, where it rains all the time, but us as students make the sunshine, and where we were shaped into the successful adults that we are today. Let's all continue to explore, dream, discover, and most importantly, say hello. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, Lara. Will the remaining candidates please stand? School Marshal Joey Sai, please lead the remaining candidates to the platform so that all may receive recognition for their academic achievement. This is it. How you doing? Hello. Kitty Ann Marie Schubach. Jay Young. Henry Thomas Hussing. You gotta shake your hand. Yusef Mustafa Mohammed. David Salome. Joshua Alexander Feldman, Christopher Anthony Tufano, Noah Reed Altman, Jacob Michael Diamond, Michael Maurice Edler, Ashlyn Alexander Yaravelis, Joseph T. Bogle, Robert M. Neese. Christopher James Hoy, Sebastian Hua Mei, Tiffany Chuang, Axel Lucas Garcia, Andrew Rubin, Maximus Michael McCreesh, Angelo Nicholas Scaglioni, Serenar Crimian. Brielle Rose Bonviso, Bonaviso, Daniel Gavi, Aiton David Altman, Roberta N. Vasili, Ania Celeste Matthews, Tatiana Eugenia Balasinovich, 
Emily Rachel Piernik Nazinski, Madison Jen Prudente, Samantha Graham, Emma R. Grassi, Rachel Catherine Caffarelli, Jillian L. Abzadeh, Christopher J. Schneider, Isabella Shea Mineo, Lucas Nikolic, Brian Anthony Mallory, Christian Michael Bayo, Jonathan John Donuts Donaldson, Ji Hao Chen, Nang Shi Chen, Yi Shan Chen. Liam Ray Gata, Jamie Helen Oliver, Angela Young, Marie L. Collins, Scarlett Renee Je Jekic, Christopher Blakes Shaker, Noah David Singh, Emily Uligari, Christopher James Melnick, Matthew Vito Bland, Amanda Page Weiss, David Jensen Coit, Melvin Ryan Molina, Lemek Bereva, Stanley Grullen, Drew Joan, Laura Hannah Lanceman, Denise Angelique Juan Rances, Shana Pierre, Vanessa Bedford, <laughs> Oloeson Hope Quakey. Pamela M. Grullen, wait, wait, Abu Bakar Kolia, Christopher Mercado, I need that, Deanna Michelle Pellegrino. Zeyan Chen, Ming Chi Yu, Wang Jing Yang, Nicholas Anthony Muchi, Andrew E. Birnbaum, James Devin Schultes, Aitan Tsvi Cohen, Ellie Iris Sanchez. Chase Austin Glad, Thomas Griffin Bodkin, Elias Antonio Loomer, Veronica Leah Udall, Anna Kazmanov, Laman Mirzaliev Leva, Daniela Scarlett Smith, Abigail Lee Snedden, Gabrielle Knuffelman, Bryant Montes, Michael Lee Carr, Timothy Michael Solomeo, John Thomas Crane, Joseph Michael Bensevengo, Eric Schulk, John Paul Duclos Somacursio. Colby James Levitt, Jack Richard Halloran, Guy Samuel Barzillai, Michael J. Borelli III, Brandon John Deservina, Mason J. Jensen, Ian Parker Mills, Laurel Adina Garahi, 
Lauren Marie Cornwell, Hannah Joy Kozlenko, Skylar Elizabeth Kabatsky, Jamie Lauren Gein, Victoria Best Fondacaro, Jennifer Page Curran, Madison Alexandra Tobacco, Helen Chen, Xu Chen Wang, Fiona Kong, Sejel Lutra, Samantha Clement, Madura Saravanan Tretyar, Emma Rose Baker, Ying Ying Chu, Madeline Miao Hu, Zeng Ke Wang, Renj Keiji O Ogundipe, Vincent, Vincent A. Ranieri, Jack Gabriel Stephen Monahan, Sean B. Kirvin, Jason George Wegg, Harry Ivanov Markov, Maxwell Reed Lieberman, Rachel H. Spontek, Victoria N. Nyarus, Patrick Reepen Swag, Angelica Lee, May C. Zhang, Ha Wen Yang, Alexander Billy, Daniel Boyuk, William Vincent Salazar Morales, Robert Matthew Acevedo, Raiko Zhang, Andrea Leo, Alvin Huang, Aiden Yip, Joyce Lee, Haley B. Hsu, Rosanna Wang, Patrick Ho Yip, Ryan Ma, Brian Shuyun O, oh. Vincent Dong, Erica Shu, Alan Shu, Brandon Shang, Diego Jose Morales, Sarah Liu Bon, Drone, Abigail Angeline Maring, Jacob D. Dimitro, Jason Moisha Payami, Guy Area Bodner, Nicholas Adam Perry, Patrick Joseph McGrinder, Dominic Migliorato, Connor Flynn McKendry, Owen Glenn Rowell, Christopher James Demiani, Nicole Victoria Moy, Taya Inko Taria, Kyle Thomas Gregor, Burke Sanseverio, Jackson Thaddeus Homan, Ryan Matthew Cohn, Meadow Ariel Perez, Nicole M. Blaze, Timothy James Lyon, Allison Nicole Getz, Dante J. Cariati, Shea Julia Butler, Rahul Mathur, Andre Lomas Alexander, Ryan Peter Marsh, Ellie Chaim Rubenstein, Adam Scott Malev, Jesse Multani, John Patrick Kennedy Bowser, Catherine Elizabeth Meyer, Catherine Michelle Bemen, Jenna Buquicchio, 
Hayden Daniel Roth, Brett Matthew Curley, Sloan Elizabeth Eglis, Caleb Michael Burson, Benjamin Warren Sorensen, Jack Ryan Kushner, Evan Raphael Habert, Anthony Jowler, Nicholas Edward Kermy, Michael Gallagher, Benjamin Gregory Tomacic, Kevin Michael Skomanski, Matthew Russell Lutz, Devin Jacob Butwell, Reese Andrews, Christopher Thomas Cooperman Levins, Patrick Finn, Marat Youngoskar, Matthew Andrew Marino, Benjamin Ronald Holloway, Zachary McMorris, Ryan Patrick Baker, Nicholas C. Dexheimer, Brian Chu, Hannah Elizabeth Bruno, Christopher J. Surlio, Bradford Jose Sterling, Michael Taylor Vasquez, Brian Michael Latovich, Gavin James O'Sullivan, Max Joseph Wolfse, Derek Vandermark, Patrick Kevin Sullivan, Anthony John Thakrow, At this time, we will recognize the accomplishments from the School of Management's METU Dual Degree Program. This marks the 16th year graduating from this. This marks the 16th graduating class from the Binghamton University Middle Eastern Technical University Dual Diploma Program. President Stanger, I'm pleased to present to you these candidates who have fulfilled all their requirements for the baccalaureate degree as prescribed by the faculty. At this time, the METU Dual Diploma candidates will come to the platform so that all may receive recognition for their academic achievement. Metin Demirkan Saldırış. Ayşe Ece Gültekin. <gülüyor> Bora Gönen. I would like now to ask everyone to rise as they are able to sing the Binghamton University alma mater. We invite everyone to join in singing the refrain and second verse. The lyrics may be found on the back cover of the commencement program.
baccalaureate degree candidates, please remain standing. Everyone else may be seated. President Stenger, I am honored to present to you these candidates for the baccalaureate degree by the university. For those who have successfully completed all degree requirements by the authority vested in me by the Chancellor and the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York and the Board of Regents of the University of the State of New York, I confer on each of you the appropriate baccalaureate degree with all the rights and privileges accompanying it. On behalf of the Binghamton University community, I congratulate you all for this well-earned accomplishment. As is customary upon conferral of the baccalaureate degree, you may now move the tassel on your cap from the right to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, partners, and friends, I present to you the Binghamton University School of Management graduating class of 2023. The spring commencement proceedings of the State University of New York at Binghamton are now concluded. We kindly ask the audience to remain seated for the academic recessional. Once the academic recessional is completed, please exit as soon as you are able.